Hello, I'm Tim Sandal and I'm a pharmaceutical microbiologist and this is my third video in the series about coronavirus, uh, the one that causes the respiratory disease COVID-19 and that's the virus SARS-CoV-2. So in the first episode we had a look at face masks, in the second episode we looked at disinfection and both these episodes, they're short, they're designed to be between five to ten minutes long and they're both available on my YouTube channel. This time we're looking at social distancing and the potential contamination that can arise from shared air and surface environment from droplet and transmission from surfaces. So based on World Health Organization advice, social distancing is the most important thing you can do to avoid coronavirus. And this is followed by regular hand washing, using hot water and soap, or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. So social distancing means observing a set distance apart and avoiding physical contact like hugs and handshakes. So why is social distancing important and where does two metres or six feet come from in terms of the standard accepted recommendation? Well, first off, social distancing is better expressed as physical distancing. But as social distancing is now part of the everyday lexicon, we stick with that. And it has a long history, the um, application of social distancing dates back to the 1918 influenza pandemic. Unfortunately, it was a measure that came in in the later stages, so it was less effective, but it was demonstrated to work. So, first of all, why, why social distance? Well, research shows that a typical cough moves for about, travels, sorry, distance of about 68 centimetres which is shorter than the 200 centimetres or two metres or six feet that's maintained for social distancing based on the WHO guidelines. With a sneeze, a typical sneeze will travel further up to 100 centimetres, but this is still below the two metres that is recommended for the social distancing. So at two metres, somebody is typically outside of the range of standard droplet projection and the droplets in this context, droplets containing coronavirus. And I've taken these figures from an article that was published in the Public Library of Science called Exhaled Air Dispersion During Coughing With and Without Wearing a surgical or N95 mask. So you can read further if you wish to. And, and the concept of social distancing is based on epidemiological research where models show that social distancing is effective at reducing the basic reproduction number of the virus. So this reproduction number means so it's the mechanism by which viral infectivity is assessed and it's based on the average number of people who could become infected individuals from another person within the general population. So if you take an example, so let's say 25% of the population practice social distancing and these 25% are successful in reducing the number of close contacts by 50%. So this can, in ideal conditions, um, decrease the viral reproduction number by about 20%. And you can read the models that underpin this in a book by a scientist called Becker, and the book is called Modelling to Inform Infectious Disease Control. So this idea of social distancing, you know, is when that a sick person coughs, talks, sneezes. 
virus particles can spray from the mouth or the nose into another person's face. And you're more likely to inhale these droplets through your mouth or your nose. So you're a degree protected by this um, distance. But it's important not to forget, and this kind of dates back to my first video about masks, is that transmission can also happen through the eyes. You can also become uh, infected by touching something that has the virus on it, like a table or a doorknob, and then touching your eyes as well. So we looked at the importance of social of, uh, sorry, of surface disinfection last week in the second video in the series. Um, and to support the importance of social distancing, many of you will recall the quarantined cruise ship that was held off the port of Yokohama in Japan back in February 2020. Now, the first detailed study into this cruise ship, the Diamond Princess, has indicated that the primary routes of coronavirus infection spreading were from surfaces and from close contact, but not so much over longer distances or through air conditioning systems. It's still not certain to the degree or otherwise that the coronavirus can spread through air in general. But in other words, the um, Diamond Princess case study emphasises the importance of social distancing and of surface disinfection. Just as an aside, an interesting fact about coronavirus transmission is that one area of research has shown that the virus does not spread easily through tears. And uh, there's a recent study came out last week where US researchers took samples of the virus from tears and also from the back of the nose and from the throat of coronavirus patients. And the tears of patients were shown to be clear of the virus and at the same time their nose and mouth were teeming with coronavirus. So despite this um, reassuring um, news in relation to tear transmission, it's still very important that people guard their eyes as well as their hands and mouth because all of this can slow down the spread of this quite dangerous respiratory virus. Um, but this research also emphasises you know, the need to continue to focus um, viral transmission measures on significant routes, faecal orals, well established, and via droplets. So this importance of social distance continues. So in this video, I just wanted to emphasise why social distance was important and to emphasise some of the uh, scientific studies behind social distancing. So that's it for this week. Next time, I'll uh, probably discuss coronavirus in general, highlighting what we know and drawing on the latest research. So that's the end of this video. I've been Tim Sandal and continue to stay safe and until next time, social distance.